Thank you, Ryan. Nothing's perfect, right? Hopefully tonight, <laughs> the imperfections have been muted. But I want you to be totally aware that tonight, things didn't go perfectly. Things never do. We're working right now in Peru, trying to be, bring access to clean water to a community of a thousand people. I'm going to be transparent. It's not been going perfectly. The government's been stepping on our toes. The permitting agencies have been delaying us. The organizations that should have our back haven't been having our back. This is a community of a thousand people that has never had access to clean water ever in the history of their organ of their community. And probably would be a long time before they did have access to clean water if it weren't for us. This community is called Las Mercedes Kilometer 11. Kilometer 11 might sound like a weird name in, in, or, in a community's name. It's literally more of a denotion. We're denoting this community because there is another community actually called Las Mercedes that is also on our current short list of communities that serve. And I want to tell you, though, however, despite the complexities, despite the delays that we've had with this community, because we have been persisting, this community will get access to clean water very soon. In fact, I have some very exciting news. My Peru Projects and Programs Director, who's somewhere in here, Ricardo Arbulo Guerrera, has informed me two days ago. Actually, he's right here. I see him in the gray, gray suit. He informed me two days ago that finally the water authority has given approval for us to give access to clean water to this community. Everything else will fall in line after that. And I know we put in a lot of time and effort and the generosity of so many have been put to use to make this possible. But I want you to know that if we weren't doing this, no one would. This community wouldn't get clean water. Look, the other day, I was holding my daughter. So I'm a, I'm a father of two, under three. My wife, Renata, back here sitting at the AV table is probably a saint already just because of putting up with me. She's an amazing woman. And my children are incredible. And I'm so blessed to be a father. I was holding my daughter, Maria, my youngest, she's 18 months old. I was holding her the other day and she like caressed and like just pushed her head down into my chest. And my, my father heart just melted. And I just like take, took a moment and I like felt like I was in the presence of the Lord. Like he was holding me, but I was still holding her, you know? And I thought to myself, how blessed am I to have my daughter in my arms to be a father and not to have to worry about her, her health? And frankly, I don't know how many of you are parents in this room or fathers in this room, but I cannot imagine losing my daughter cannot break me to a waterborne illness. Every 90 seconds, a child under the age of five years old is dying from a waterborne illness somewhere in the world. If that were my daughter, I would lose it. But praise be to God, it's not. But you know what? Also, praise be to God that we have an opportunity to make that statistic disappear. We can change that. And Veraca Veravita has a proven method, a proven model that is sustainable. We've literally just completed a three 
plus year post-project impact assessment in the first community we ever served. Many of the pictures that you were seeing on the screen tonight during our slideshow were from this community called Monte Castillo. It's this first community we ever served. Matt mentioned it in his talk. He saw this need. He saw the impact when he visited this community. Monte Castillo, a community of 7,000 plus people. Free project, free our work in this community three and a half years ago now. This community had 84% of the community was suffering from a chronic waterborne illness. And I know for a fact, and I'm not trying to be stark here, but it's the reality. I know for a fact that many of these families had lost children because they got sick because of waterborne illnesses. The elderly were dying at a young age. In fact, a 40, mid 40s year old man got a waterborne illness, a tapeworm in his um, belly and burrowed in and got up into his bloodstream, into his brain, paralyzed them. He lost all motor skills, was unable to speak. Within a couple years, he was in a wheelchair. His name was Manuel, a 40-year-old man. This community, pre-project, 84% of the community suffering from chronic waterborne illnesses. Post-project, three and a half years later, 17, sorry, 13% now are only suffering from chronic waterborne illnesses. We're talking a 71% decrease. 5,000 plus people no longer suffer from chronic waterborne illnesses. No longer are having to deal with a child dying before they should ever die. Look, all parents in the room, I cannot imagine losing my child. Can you? Let alone when they're two or three years old? Come on. That's the need. We have a need right now. $72,000 is our need. We are going to raise, I think we're going to probably raise over $40,000 tonight. Praise be to God. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Let's pat ourselves on the back. Yeah, sure. Amen. But let's not stop there. We have a need for a recurring support of an additional $72,000 every single year so that we can hire an engineer that can allow us to give two to three more projects, two to three more communities, complete two to three more projects every single year. That's the need. Look, the government's not doing the work. I hate to say it. The government's even stepping on toes and stopping from work from happening. They're corrupt. Look, my Peru Projects and Programs Director right here, he's from Lima. He's from Peru. I got another guy in the room, a really good friend of mine. He's from Peru. He knows what I'm talking about. They're not helping like they should. We need to raise $72,000 more every single year to give access to clean water, to two to three more communities every single year. What does that equate to? Look, I know there's some guys, some women in this room that are a part of our recurring donor community, what we like to call the ripple, because we're making changes that will last for generations. Thank you, first and foremost. I'm not going to call you out. You know who you are, but I also know who you are. And the people that we're serving are the ones that are the greatest beneficiaries of your generosity. Thank you so much if you are a recurring donor already. But look, we need to, we need to flip this even further. If you're a recurring donor, please listen to what I'm about to say. Maybe you're giving at your limit, but maybe you can give more, and I would challenge you to do so. If you're not a recurring donor already, help us get to this $72,000 mark, whether that's a monthly gift or an annual commitment. It's very easy to do. Right in front of you on your tables, there are pledge cards. There are pins. There are envelopes. Write in your pledge. 
Write in your gift right now. What does this look like? This looks like 120 people at what? Can someone help me? Can someone do the math? 120 people at how many people a month would help us to get to $72,000 a year? Who's really good at math? 600. No, it's actually not. 50 people at 50 a month would be what? 20, what was that? 2,500 a month times 12 would not be $72,000. In fact, 100 people at $50 a month, which would be $5,000 a month, would be $60,000 a year. We need every person in this room to help us cross this threshold. Please. If we can do this, literally, I am not joking you. We have developed a model, an approach, a system that works. It's sustainable. I promise you, we have developed a sustainable, we put in the last two and a half to three years in developing a model and a system that works. Grab your pledge cards and help make this model last for generations to come. With your support, even just $50 a month, we can give access to clean water for one person for generations to come. Look, never doubt that a small group of people can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. If we could get the project pushed through, we'd probably have served 1,500 people this year alone. This community of Las Mercedes, Kilometer 11, community of 1,000 people, we'd have community clean water for this community for generations to come. We'd also have clean water for another community called Sarah de Lonas, which we haven't been able to get to because all of our time and effort and dollars are being spent to move this other community's project forward because we don't have a dedicated engineer that can help us push the envelope to give access to clean water to another community. We'd have another community, the Cerro de Lunas would have a community of 500 people would also have access to clean water right now. That's the reality. So I know y'all are sitting here and you're thinking, what do I do? There's no gift that's too small. We have people giving anywhere from the equivalent Anywhere, literally, the equivalent of anywhere between $10 a month to $5,000 a month equivalent. No gift is too small. Fall in that range. You're, you're not insignificant. You give $10 a month, that's two plus people every single year that will get access to clean water. And if you can help us push this push this button and get to the $72,000 a month, sorry, a year total, we will be able to hire this engineer. We will be able to give access to clean water to three to four people, sorry, three to four communities every single year. Three to four more communities. We're talking about three to 4,000 more people. Grab your pledge card, please. I'm gonna call Ryan back up. He's going to close us out. Thank you so much. In the words of Blessed Pier Giorgio Fersati, verso l'alto.